Welcome back to Airborne Production. Today we are going to kick off a series on building an anvil from scratch at home. Before we dive into the planning and prep work, let's first talk a bit about what you look for in an anvil. A blacksmith might decide to buy or build an anvil for many different purposes. A farrier is looking for an anvil with a very pronounced horn, while a knife maker would prefer less mass in the horn and heel and much more mass in the body underneath the face. A jeweler, on the other hand, would want a tiny little anvil, as it is inconvenient and rather difficult to forge jewelry on a 300 pound monstrosity. As a general rule of thumb, expect your anvil to be about 50 times as massive as your hammer. If your primary striking hammer weighs about four pounds, look for an anvil in the 200 pound range. By the end of the build, we expect this thing to weigh in at around 180 pounds, which falls right between our three pound and four pound hammers, which is perfect. Our primary use for this anvil will be knife making and general blacksmithing. So a general purpose anvil will do the trick. Now on to the materials used. The base of the anvil is not nearly as critical as the face, so for this we will use some plain old mild steel. We also picked mild steel for the feet, as these little Pac-Man shaped pieces will work perfect. Moving on up to the body, we decided to use some harder steel, which we acquired by chopping up an old forklift fork. Trust me, this steel is hard. At the very top of the anvil is the face, which is the top striking surface. For this, we used a piece of A2 tool steel, as it will be plenty hard enough once it is properly hardened later. The last piece of the puzzle is the horn, where a 4140 steel bar fits the bill. Our original intention was to stack up the forklift steel, kind of like a deck of cards. However, after observing the gaps in the steel, highlighted in yellow here, we realized that energy would be lost when striking, and a more efficient way to stack up the steel is with the steel pieces standing up vertically. This makes a much more solid anvil in the direction of the downward force of each hammer blow, which at the end will result in far less energy lost. So off we went. In all, our anvil will roughly follow the shape of common traditional anvils. However, anvils typically have a narrower waist, which becomes much wider towards the top, as well as a bit wider towards the feet. But this doesn't really matter. Ours definitely will look different than the typical anvil, but its functionality is in no way diminished. Before the anvil gets built, we need to prep the materials first. We ground off all of the paint and put a chamfer on each edge in order to get better weld penetration when we weld it later. We also annealed and milled out our A2 steel top, which will be completely welded to the top of the steel stack and will serve as the anvil striking surface. We are not just welding the face on at the edges. Utilizing stick welding, we will weld the entire underside of the A2 steel to the anvil by leaving a gap and filling that entire piece with weld. Lastly, we made quite a few angled cuts on our 4140 round bar, which was only made possible due to our bandsaw. This creates a rough profile of an anvil horn, which will be ground into shape later, once it is welded to the anvil. In the next video, we will weld together all of our anvil pieces and turn the scrap metal into an anvil that's just as functional as it is heavy. Here we're using a simple digital scale to find out the approximate weight of the anvil once everything's put together. There was one piece that we didn't include in this measurement, but once we added up everything, we're getting about 140 and a half pounds. That's not including the horn or any weld that gets added. So stick around for part two, where we put all these pieces together and ended up with a functioning anvil. Thanks for watching.